Uh, so, uh, Caroline, many thanks for asking me to speak this afternoon. Um, I'm destination leader for Perth and Kinross. And um, who am I? My name is Sasha Grierson. Um, I'm one half of Hugh and Sasha Grierson, and we run our organic farm and butchery business together here in rural Perthshire. We call ourselves organic farm butchers. We farm about 1,150 acres across five sites in the Strathairn Valley and in Perthshire. Uh, not far from where some of you all live. Uh, it's nice to see some locals here today. Um, we've been organic since 2000, and this is very important for us. Uh, it's integral what we do to what we do, and it provides us with the framework that underpins everything that happens here on our farms and our land. From growing food, to how we butcher and pack things, to the wetlands that we create, to the agroforestry ambitions that we have for the future, and actually also with engaging with people via agritourism. That's very much part of that vision now. Um, we breed and rear pedigree Aberdeen Angus beef, uh, homebred lamb, where that's currently this year's R&D project over the next couple of years to try and improve uh, on the farming side for our, for our sheep. We have rare breed pigs. They're rare for a reason, we won't go into that. Um, slow growing free range organic chicken and free range organic eggs. So we sell what we grow and we've been price makers and I think that's probably quite an important term within farming and if I'm talking to a kind of farming and rural business audience since 2000. Um, it's been a long and winding journey but it, it certainly has shaped our vision uh, and shaped everything that we do. So now, okay. Next slide. So, um, hang on. Now, can someone help me to get this in full screen? Sasha, if you just go down to the bottom there. Thank you. Yeah, I see it. Just to the right. Oh, oh yeah, that one. Great. Thanks so much. That's great. Thanks, Caroline. Um, so what do we do um, agritourism wise? Well, we connect visitors with our organic farm via the food that we grow and that we serve them to eat in the visitor experiences that we have. So, so that, that seems like a kind of completely obvious thing to do, but, but it's not really that common, I don't think. Um, and it's kind of where we started because we started at the diversifying at the food end and developed our butchery business. The, the agritourism bit grew out of selling food directly to people, not by bringing people onto the farm through self catering and then and then selling them food. So it's it's a kind of natural segue for us. Um, in about 2016, uh, I got together with a tour operator and we kind of came, I, her and I in conversation, we kind of came up with this thing, it's again, quite obvious, but uh, we developed a, an idea, the, the um, Aberdeen Angus steak tasting experience. And it's all based around our Aberdeen Angus pedigree herd. And when you're organic, growing grass and clover um, is absolutely critical to your farming system. And so you have to make that grass and clover productive. Therefore, you have to have cattle and sheep in order to, to turn grass into food. And that's, that's just a fact of life in Scotland. Um, and so uh, it's centered very much around the kitchen table. We take people out to see some cows, some really super cows there. They just, they, they, they're very photogenic and um, they're always quite impressive. And then we take them into the butchery and we show them something on the hook. Um, and, and that sometimes for people can be a bit challenging, but frankly, they haven't booked the steak tasting experience if they're, if, if they're challenged about around, if they've got challenges around eating meat. And usually we introduce them to the butcher if he's working that day. And this is a good example of how to use uh, charismatic staff to their best, uh, best potential. And Murray's great, he gives them a nice bit of chat there's something going on on the butcher's block, which is a traditional giant piece of wood. And uh, again, people are always impressed by that. And then we take them in around the kitchen table and um, we 
I cook or someone else does, cooks and feeds them some steak. And, and so what, this is very much a, a private tour for a small group of people. And it basically engages them around the whole food and farming process. And it's a two hour tour, which is probably enough. Um, and then we also engage our customers around uh, farm tours as well. And that's very much a larger group. Um, we get student groups. We do get private visits for farm tours. Hugh does the soil and technical chat. Um, that's Hugh there on the top right hand side. And he's pulled up something interesting uh, from, from the ground. I think that's a, a nice bit of red clover. And he's describing to our guests there how, how clover fixes nitrogen from, from the air, releases it into the soil for other plants to use. Um, Hugh, Hugh's very good at this. Um, it's not his natural thing to be, you know, hosting groups of people, but he does this technical side really well. Not everyone who wants an agritourism experience is going to want to get involved in and, and learn at that level of detail. But usually people want to know something. And, and if they go away from the farm having learned something that they didn't know about soil biology or then, then that's quite an enriching experience for them. Um, and so here that just shows you we get right down into the soil on the bottom right and we dig a sod and we talk about grass species and all that sort of stuff. The other thing that people are fascinated by is sheep. There just seems to be an endless demand for people wanting to see roundups of sheep. Um, so in the bottom left hand corner, there's Dave the stockman with his collies. We usually send him out on the quad bike. People stand at the gate and he rounds up some, you know, 10 sheep into a pen. And then we go and talk about sheep. And that can really soak up a huge amount of time. And most people seem really interested in that. Um, so so that's, that's, that, that's the kind of things that work really well. Um, people want to engage with other people talking about their business. And they also want to engage. They, they, they want that experience to be authentic. That's the, that's the thing that's really come out of our experience of doing farm tours and visits for, for three years. And sadly, we had to cancel them all last year. Um, and I don't think there'll be much happening this year either, but we'll, 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 see. we'll see how things go. So Hugh does, this, does the kind of farming technical side. And for me, I like to do talking about the connections between soil, farming methods and how we grow food, what food we grow, what tastes good, how to cook it, how to eat it, that kind of thing. So how did we get started? Well, I talk about this a lot if I ever get the opportunity to do so, and, and largely because, because RET is just a great organization, the Royal Highland Educational Trust. And for those of you that don't know, um, we are farming volunteers for RET, and RET brings school, parties of school children onto farms for farm visits. There's a module in the school curriculum for P4 children, uh, which some schools choose called food and farming, or I think it's just called farming, I'm not sure. And so that tends to be the target audience. And the, the, the reason for, um, for, the reason I say RET was, for, it was really an inspiration for us is because we learned our trade. We learned how to deliver a tour. If you can keep 39 year olds happy for an hour and a half, an adult is easy. So, um, so, and also they're where we get ideas um, and they ask you really tough questions, uh, nine-year-olds. And they ask you the kind of questions that you just can't shy away from because you can't lie to a child. So um, you have to tell the truth. And so, yeah, so that, that was one thing. Um, they also gave us the confidence around the whole kind of um, infrastructure bit, risk assessments, how we manage a group of people on what is, uh, in effect, a factory floor uh, on the farm, how we keep people safe from cattle, et cetera, et cetera. And, and here you can see Hugh has inadvertently led this party of school kids on a worm hunt. And just the whole, the day was amazing. And, and Hugh came back from it completely refreshed and reinvigorated as well after a couple of hours with some, with some children who thought that digging for worms in his patch of plowed field was just a really exciting thing to do. On a, on a fairly grey afternoon. The other thing that happened is we hosted the launch of uh, Slow Food Scotland in 2014. Uh, I crammed 50 people into our kitchen 
and we heard from some really inspirational um, artisan food producers and speakers across the world of chefs um, uh, growers uh, and people who've really um, uh, who are who are doing some incredible work in their businesses and and in their in their working lives educating people around food and and also um, just being food activists really and so those were our barns before they were converted and um, we sat everybody down and uh, at long tables on straw bales and it was just an amazing day so that set my brain going so um, the other thing is that we had a lot of random inquiries We're, we've been customer facing since 2000 and so we had a um, we had a brand and we had a website and social media and we got lots of people saying do you do visits do you do tours can I come to visit the farm and so instead of saying no I just said yes instead and so off we went and that was before we had the infrastructure of having any um any toilet facilities and, and we sort of we, we winged it winged it wing it winged it we winged it a bit um and but that got us going and got us booked in um on the on the point about ret we've only ever had one problem with a school visit and that was when we lost a, a parent helper the parent helper lay down in the silage field amongst the grass to look at the sky and we went to count everybody in at the end of the visit and he was still out there so um it beware of the adults not the children <laughs> um so so what do we want our future to be well we actually i've just put in a couple of bits there really about the things that guide us in in our in our in our, in our work in our in our in our farming business yes we want to make a profit of course we do and um, we have to make a profit and we have to make a reasonable enough profit to be able to reinvest in our business and um, to try to grow it and future proof it and make it resilient but there are things that guide us along the way and um and those two statements there really um uh, are guiding statements for us we want to still be here farming in in the next generation whoever may come behind us and pasture farming in a way that nurtures our natural capital and also preserves our soils and our landscape is part of that natural capital and i think that's something in the agritourism world you can be farming and farming and farming and farming and then you turn around one day and you go wow that's a great view and and there's there's a lot to there's something you can do with that in in a in a, in a business capacity um, the other thing is on the point about eating the future you want and um, tourists tourists eat three times a day so we've got three opportunities to engage with visitors to our country to our locality and uh, as farmers and growers we've got three opportunities a day to to feed them and to welcome them to our farm so um so on that note we've sort of we're fairly new to the self-catering thing because we've been growing the food and selling the food and last summer we just um picked up on the opportunity to um rent out our farmhouse uh, these are our farm buildings down here on the right hand side which are um, now been converted into a couple of studio apartments and two quite small but quite compact event spaces with toilets and services which we have used for events and so um, Hugh and I decided to move into one of the flats and we rented out our farmhouse there with its nice garden and its nice kitchen and that's been very popular and we have lots of bookings for this summer and I think this will be the direction of travel for us and is to try to optimize the value around the beautiful farmhouse with the beautiful views and connecting it to our, our, our food produce uh, in, in some way, shape or form. So why should you, what about Scottish agritourism? Um, why join it? What's it done for us? What are the benefits? Um, there's this sort of incredible WhatsApp group which um, I, I know Caroline is, is kind of uh, working on trying to, um, to stream it a bit, streamline it a wee bit. Um, you ask a question, you get an answer. 
Um, and it's a very supportive group. And that's quite unusual for farming. Um, farmers aren't notorious for getting together and sharing information and helping each other just in that very informal way. So, so this feels like a really good thing. If someone doesn't know something, they often signpost you uh, to somewhere else to go for help. Um, and last summer, it was just invaluable in helping to navigate the kind of minefield of information during, during COVID. And I have to say, there's, it's a, it was a classic example of where collective brains with good leadership really cut through the noise of what, was, what support was out there for businesses. So thank you, Caroline, really and truly. Um, got signposted to the Association of Scottish Self-Caterers, great help with protocols, risk assessments, discounted membership. Um, in order just to get started, it can be a little daunting sometimes starting up a new mini enterprise in a business. Um, the Scottish Agritourism is leadership with clear vision. Sometimes when people come together, people have different agendas. Everyone seems to want to just get on with the job, develop their business along, along sort of a range of different lines of, 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 of experiences for the customer. But everyone's looking in one direction. Um, I would, if you want to monetize it, I would say I've had 10 times the, 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 uh, the, the, 10 times the advice for the, for the membership fee, at least. Um, and then there's the other thing about peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning is a very powerful thing. And it's, um, it's been, I feel it's been very evident with the Scottish Agritourism Group. So do join us. Um, we're going places.